Women of today have made significant advances in politics, the academe, and professional careers. Legal and policy gains such as the recently passed Anti-Discrimination Act of 2011 and the Magna Carta Law for Women show a vibrant women's movement. After educating and uh, raising their consciousness, kaalaman at uh, pag-aaral ng mga issue, ang susunod at pinakamahalagang hakong talaga yung is to organize them. And when you organize them, nandoon na yung empowerment eh. However, the gender situation in the Philippines is in stark contradiction. According to the National Statistics Office, one in five Filipinas suffers domestic violence. More than 500,000 are being prostituted, and thousands of battered, exploited, and economically disadvantaged women are left undocumented. They increase ng uh, program, including the budget, so that we have a lot of crisis centers for women survivors. The same is true for the sector of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, or LGBT. While we perceive them as dazzlingly skilled in entertainment, many successful in their careers, the social fabric remains heavily stained by discrimination and alienation. LGBT rights and welfare are yet to be truly reflected in legislation. Their representation is also under constant threat. Kaya nga sinusulong ng partidong Ladlad na uh, magkaroon ng anti-discrimination bill na magpoprotekta sa mga kapatid natin na walang diskriminasyon basis sa sexual orientation, sa gender identity mo. As gender equality issues gain ground in national discourse and while the huge gender divide continues to push women and LGBT outside the social margin, will the 2013 midterm polls be a turning point for the so-called culture shift over gender and sexual orientation? Well, the 2013 midterm polls are shaping up to be an exciting one. I'm Nancy Irlanda, and this is Elections 2013. Tonight, we talk about the most pressing issues surrounding, as well as the agenda of, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender, or LGBT community, and also the women's sector in the upcoming midterm elections. Joining us tonight, lawyer Claire Padilla, founder of Engender Rights, Jomar Amores, spokesperson with the Progressive Organization of Gays in the Philippines, or Pro-Gay for short, and the founder of Can't Live in the Closet and Women's Media Circle, Anna Lea Sarabia. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this evening. Well, just in the service of accuracy, the anti-discrimination bill was passed on third reading at the lower house. It hasn't actually passed the bicameral uh, conference level. Let's just make, make that clear. No, there's, oh. there's no Senate version. There's no but Senate there is, version. There is, there is a Senate it version. Didn't pass that's, why, that's why it's currently now on bicameral conference committee, but uh, there hasn't been any uh, conference set for the for the anti-discrimination bill. All right, let's let's take let's take off on that mm -hmm. idea then. Anti-discrimination, that's an ideal thing. Mm -hmm. Why is it in, in danger of not being passed? Um, well, for one, there's a strong lobby against it by church groups. Um, it's actually a very good bill because it prohibits discrimination based on not just on sexual orientation and gender identity, but uh, discrimination based on race. Uh, sex, gender, uh, religion, and uh, also sexual orientation, gender identity, and anything on which bias can be displayed. Right, right. And the church mm -hmm. is an obstacle to this. Uh, yes, they're opposing even uh, discrimination based on sex, gender, uh, and sexual orientation and gender identity. So, which means that they are even against uh, the same opposition they had with the RH bill. Um, they feel that, well, uh, I don't want to speak for their opposition, but basically they're opposing it. Um, while it's a very, very good uh, bill in the sense that it will prohibit discrimination based on the, a wide range of uh, discrimination in, in all aspects, um, it can uh, penalize hate crimes mm -hmm. uh, based on sexual orientation, gender identity. Sexual bullying. Right. Um, there's also protection against discrimination in the workplace, in the education, uh, and all other matters. For example, uh, we try to make it encompassing. Uh, there's, uh, we're hoping that um, there will be a bicameral conference committee even now during the midterm elections. Um, if Senator Lagar Lagarda calls for the bicameral conference committee, there is hope that it can be passed 
uh, when the Congress uh, convenes in July. Okay. Which mm -hmm. elements do you think will be contentious in, in the event that this bicameral conference committee happens soon? Um, well, to me, there's nothing contentious about it except that okay. um, generally you would, you would see opposition based on, I would say, it could be religious mm -hmm. uh, and it, it would be based on um, homophobia mm -hmm. and even uh, discrimination against women and LGBTs, for example. Okay. Anna Lea, uh, from your understanding of this anti-discrimination bill in its current form, you like what's in it? Or is it lacking? I, I'm not so sure I know the contents of, or the provisions of this bill, uh, but it seems like the opposition is coming from the point of view of the right, the right to discriminate, um, the right to be a uh, supremacist in mm -hmm. a way. And that's what I see is the problem with, with the church opposition. Why are they opposing anything that, that uh, uh, promotes equality? They, it seems, do not believe in equality. They believe that they are superior to uh, the rest, and it is their morality, their sense of whatever is good that should be imposed on all. all right. and, and, and this, uh, if they believe in it so much, it's very difficult to, um, to change their mind. So, what they're really trying to impose on, on the rest of us is that um, only a certain kind of belief is, is good. Uh, it is not equal to the rest of, of uh, other beliefs. And um, this is what should prevail in this country, which is really completely anti-democratic. All right. Would you say it's fair to say at this point that the issue of lesbianism is uh, more taboo than in the gay community. Is it fair to say that? Depends. That really. you know, your issues are more discreet and just, just more beneath the surface than it is in the well, gay community. Well, in the first place, uh, uh, between women and men, women have less uh, elbow room. Um, we, we have a lot to uh, fight for in terms of being treated uh, equal, equally uh, by our sex. You know? Uh, as females, um, and then you go into this uh, very amorphous or misty kind of uh, concept, which is gender and gender identity, and uh, people who who want to discriminate against um, uh, LGBT say that uh, it's your guniguni, your imagination. Uh, it's because y you know uh, this is something that you can choose when. Um, uh, it's because they, they consider anything that's not according to their beliefs evil. I mean, how do you explain it? It's very difficult. Um, when women want to be treated equally or um, they want to fight for gender equality, if it uh, steps on the toes of what the church says is not right, you know, but because we're not supposed to be equal according to them, Mm -hmm. then they oppose it. So um, it's difficult for women who um, just for n being female to fight for uh, equal treatment. And then if you include the, this whole uh, moralistic uh, uh, concept of um, gender identity uh, in, the, in, in put it in the pot, it becomes even more difficult. Difficult. That's why um, a lot of, of uh, lesbians, especially if they are uh, looking feminine, mm -hmm. um, they often um, feel that they have to hide it. Stay in the closet. All right. Yeah. Jomar, you're observing what is happening in the political arena. It's the midterm elections. Do you think that the rights and issues of the gay community are being properly espoused by the current crop of candidates? Actually, um, yung mga kasalukuyang tumatakbo ngayon, mm -hmm. di alam naman natin may kanya-kanyang lingwahe ang iba't ibang mga politiko para lang makuha ang simpatsya ng mga mamamaya, ang partikular ang mm -hmm. usapin na LGBT community. So, sa amin po, partikular sa mga LGBT, mas ang tinitignan namin is yung track record mm -hmm. ng mga politikong tumatakbo at naninindigan doon sa sinasabi nilang they will promote the LGBT. Opinion. Pero when it comes to platforms, walang specific to the LGBT na nakikita ka talaga ngayon. 
may mga ilan po na napapansin namin na pangangailangan namin. A given, Pro-Gay Philippines is representing LGBT from the urban slum. Mm -hmm. Tapos LGBT from the workers, peasants, national minorities, mga kabataang estudyante sa bawat eskulahan. So may mga politiko na nagbibitbit ng isyo namin labas pa sa usapin ng pagiging bakla. So may mga may mga ganong politiko. Okay, when it comes to your representation, even that, medyo namimiligro. For example, Ladlad, mahirap ma-approve ma as a party list group uh, on the grounds of immorality. Your thoughts on that? Una sa lahat, isang tagumpay po ng LGBT community yung ma makilala ang Ladlad bilang party list. Mm -hmm. At yun Finally. ay, yes, at nakakatawa at kami ay nagdiriwang. So, sana, ang in-expect namin, hindi lang sana makikita yung lakas ng LGBT doon sa LGBT lang. Kasi naniniwala po kasi ang pro-gay na ang LGBT ay nahihiwalay na nga sa lipunan. So dapat hindi niya pa dapat ihiwalay. Bagkus, how to win the sympathies and the support of the straight allies. So yun yung mas nakikita natin na dapat mas mapahusay natin. All right, Claire, when we talk about women, is it safe to say that we are still very marginalized? As we know, the world has changed. The role and the stature of women in the workplace, mm -hmm. uh, more are becoming breadwinners. It's mm -hmm. a whole different world now. Mm -hmm. And yet, mm -hmm. it's not reflected uh, in, in perhaps legislation, in the realities right. of the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, if you consider law, policy, and practice, um, in law, uh, the RH bill, uh, the RH law, uh, there's even a possibility that uh, we don't know whether the Supreme Court will declare it constitutional, constitutional or unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping they will declare it constitutional. Other issues, of course, this would directly relate to gender-based violence. We don't have divorce in the Philippines. Um, for example, for my clients who are battered women, we, we really need a law uh, severing the marriage ties and making it easier for them, which will not be based on uh, judicial interpretation. So one would be having a divorce law. Um, can, I, can I hone in on that for right. a while? The RH mm -hmm. bill has already broken a huge mm -hmm. barrier. I mean, of course, there's been that status quo anti-order, but the fact mm -hmm. is that, mm -hmm. that it passed both houses, at least the legislative uh, branch. Uh, they've been able to, to mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. break, that, right. break that barrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone's saying the divorce bill could come next. From, uh, your, from your, uh, you know, being immersed, mm -hmm. of course, in that, in that field and well, certainly, world, what do you think? I've been pushing for the divorce law as well. Um, I want it to be passed. Um, the reason because is, um, in my experience as a lawyer of uh, battered women, for example, uh, we have difficulty winning um, annulment or nullity cases. Mm -hmm. um, this would be based on judges, the different interpretations of, of judges. Um, it's discriminatory in the sense that a lot of poor women are unable to file nullity of marriages. Um, plus, you even have examples of Supreme Court cases saying that even with um, a battered woman, um, an alcoholic husband, for example, that's not clear ground of psychological incapacity. And I would say definitely that if you have a battered woman here um, and at the same time her husband is an alcoholic, a gambler, etc. I would say that those are clear examples of psychological incapacity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the same manner, um, these grounds should be considered in, in a divorce law, which okay. means that, yes. Okay, Claire, we're gonna, have to go, we're gonna have to go back to that thought. I'm sure it's gonna be a very interesting one. We're gonna yeah. have to go to a short break. Okay. Please hold that thought. All right, after the break, more issues about the LGBT and women's sector. Stay tuned, you're watching Elections 2013. We're listening. Welcome back. You're still watching Elections 2013. We're still talking about the LGBT and women's agenda in the coming midterm polls. And back to our guest, Analea. You wanted to expand uh, on 
well, on I what wanted, Claire was saying. I wanted to pick up um, on something that um, uh, Claire said on uh, violence. You see, um, we may even have good laws. We may even have um, um, model um, legislations that are being uh, copied by our neighboring countries, for instance. But look at what's happening. Um, rape and violence against women hasn't really gone down. In fact, um, it may be on the, uh, on the rise. On the and uh, you have laws and then you have judges who are discriminatory. The judges don't believe in, in, uh, in equality or they don't believe that, that women have the right to protect themselves from, from cruel husbands and, and from torture. Um, what are we talking about? Because, you know, when you have very good laws, which we really have fought for, um, and then you have people who are making judgments uh, based on these laws, or they, they ignore a lot of laws, like RA 9262, the Anti-Violence Against Women, many of the judges uh, ignore some of the provisions there. So it's the interpretation yeah, I mean, it's and the implementation, that's the weak link. Um, it's really the attitude. The attitude of the judges has to really change. And somebody up there, like maybe the Department of Justice or the Supreme Court, really has to tell them, you, know, you cannot ignore um, uh, gender equality. You cannot ignore some of these provisions. And you have to really protect women. All but right. this is not really happening. And we, if, if, um, and we do need to focus on that as well. Because right now, every, everyone seems to be uh, looking at legislation to protect us, to give us the rights. We actually have so many good laws that are already uh, supposed to protect us, but we're not, um, it's not being, this, these laws are not being followed. We're still up against those who interpret Yeah, it. so mm -hmm. we really have to look also, not just at Congress, and even if we're looking at elections, you have to look at the judicial system. Judicial system, the media, the education. The whole uh, culture. Throw, yeah, throw in the really, whole culture. because the whole yeah. culture is really being, um, um, is really being um, uh, manipulated and, 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 and uh, used. So elections will uh, be, the results of the elections will be the result of how well we are able to use the culture. Okay, of course we're talking about the areas where we stand great improvement. But Jomar, matanong ko sa'yo, we've come a long way, malayo na narating natin compared to before. Is that a fair statement? Mm, kung kukumpara mo dati na wala pang mga LGBT organization, talagang napakalunos, kalunos-lunos ang Tsaka kalagayan. talagang in the closet. Oo. Pero ngayon, na uh, kaliwat ka na, 20 years na. ago. 20 years ago. Ang mga LGBT, <laughs> ang LGBT activism, number one. Yes. At nagka-come up na rin ang mga LGBT organizations. Mm -hmm. At hindi na rin sila natatakot. What do you think is the tipping point when it became less taboo to come out? Ah, okay. It had to come from media to help. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, I used to be a TV producer for women's programs. And it was very difficult for us to really get our... Uh, programs on um, lesbian and gay rights. Mm -hmm. Those themes to uh, see air. Approved. Um, and then when they started be being approved and we could start um, talking about it, um, it really changed. Because what, what are we talking about? Um, um, we're talking about rights. And if you don't have the voice to even talk about the rights, then you're not going to be able to go to the next step. It's really no voice no choice, no power. And how do you get the power? Then you have to really speak up and assert mm -hmm. your... Again, we've come yeah. a long way. Correct, but it took We're talking years. about it now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, it had to come from articulation. All okay. right. Now, um, let me ask, and we were talking about discrimination, right? Exactly how much discrimination is there in the workplace? Mm -hmm. How rampant is it? Because, you know, I mean, let's say I work in this industry. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, there's really hardly any closet you have to stay in anymore. Hardly. I'm not saying totally. Um, Nancy, I for women, for have, example. I, for, for women, yeah. um, well, there's, there's discrimination still. Um, there's an equal pay for work of equal value, for example. Okay. Um, and even for LGBTs, I have clients. Mm -hmm. I, she can be a janitor who's discriminated because she's a lesbian. She can be, for example, uh, someone who works at the academe 
and who may be terminated simply because he's gay, for example. And you don't even have to disclose this when you apply, right? right it's only right. if they get wind of your orientation. Right, right. Um, I have, I, I helped out in a case where uh, a mother actually locked her daughter for a month for just because she found out, the mother found out that um, her daughter had a partner. So mm -hmm. imagine a mother um, um, uh, holding up her daughter uh, in the room for a month. And, and these are discriminatory acts that's happening, violence even that's happening. Um, that's why we, we actually want the politicians and, and, and even the executive branch um, and the judiciary as well to consider all this discrimination and um, finally to, to eliminate discrimination and fight for equality of women, LGBTs, for example. All right, prostitution, I mean, you know, on the face of it is a bad word, right? But let me ask you, I mean, is there any sense in actually legalizing it to protect women who right. engage in it? Um, yeah. um, in, in, in my personal experience, I would have um, cases where uh, women were victims of rape they ended up in prostitution in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, they might have been uh, victims of you know, violent families. Mm -hmm. um, they might have been battered by their parents, by their uncles and aunts, for example, and that's why they ended up in prostitution. And there are a lot of cases, for example, where these are actually the ones that are in the streets in, into prostitution. Um, that's why um, penalizing women in prostitution is never the answer. But, what but we right. need... Le legalizing prostitution is like, you know, for us, many feminists, we consider prostitution as, um, as slave trade. It's, mm -hmm. a viol it's a form of violence mm -hmm. against women. So, and mm -hmm. you right. cannot legalize uh, the, the slave trade. You have to decriminalize the women who are in prostitution because they are, you know, uh, in a situation where they need some help. But to institutionalize it would make sure that there are perhaps health safeguards or talk of it police doesn't, brutality. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. That won't it, work. No, because mm -hmm. in places where uh, where prostitution is legal, you have an increase of rape, you have uh, increase of sexual harassment, and it 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 is an illusion. Who profits from legalizing prostitution? The pimps. It's not the women. So this group is one in uh, not being in favor of legalizing. No, you um, decriminalize. Decriminalize. Decriminalize the, the prostitution uh, issue. Um, but we would want women, for example, to have other options. So yeah. they would, it would be good if they would have education, skills training, um, that kind of a background. And it will be their choice whether they want to stay in or, or not. But in a lot of cases, they would say that it's a very violent uh, uh, a lot of violence happens, mm -hmm. for example, uh, they are raped, they are battered, for yeah, example, it, it by their clients. Well, legalizing it won't help. Right. Le legalizing won't help. Okay. Kung, kung so aaralin Mark. kasi natin, bakit kailangan gawing legal ang isang prostitution? Kung aaralin natin, napipilitan ang maraming kababaihan na pumasok dyan dahil sa kawalan ng trabaho. So dapat ang iniisip ay paano makalikha ng trabaho at yung trabaho na to ay bubuhay sa kanya at sa kanyang pamilya. Okay. Na so, hindi na sure. ang kanyang katawan. Dalawang, dalawang issue kasi yan eh. Ang, ang legalizing the prostitution uses legalizing the industry of slavery, sex slavery. We don't want that because that's a, uh, uh, promoting more violence. Mm -mm. What we want to do is um, make those people who are in this situation not criminalized. No, they should not be criminalized because they're victims. They should be taken out of there mm -hmm. uh, and given options. Okay. All right. From prostitution, let's move over to same-sex marriage. Ah. You think it stands a chance, or does that stand a smaller chance than divorce? What has a greater chance of divorce becoming a law? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> kahit sa amin sa same-sex marriage and then you divorce. Mas okay. Mas nakikita namin ang divorce law, ang divorce yeah. bill mm -hmm. na mag magpa-prosper mm -hmm. kesa sa same-sex marriage. Mas ang hinahangad namin is to make a bill, an anti-discrimination bill giving protection to us, LGBT. Kasi napakahirap maging tao kung hindi mo natatamasa ang karapatang pantao. Alright. How mature is each sector that you feel there is an actual block vote, a lesbian block vote, a gay block vote, a women's block vote? Mm -hmm. Um, Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'd just like to add, um, personally, as a human rights advocate, I would, I would fight for the right to um, equality in marriage. Mm -hmm. um, because I believe that as long as there's no equality in marriage, there will always be discrimination against LGBTs. In terms of a black vote, um, 
Well, I would say that there is for women and for um, LGBTs. For example, you have the Anglad Lad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was a counsel for Anglad Lad when, when we filed the case with the Supreme Court to protect their right to uh, engage in politics. But you um, don't, you don't uh, 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 interpret it uh, saying as all women, just, just because they're women, vote the same way. It's mm -hmm. like you're saying everybody who's a woman uh -oh. thinks the same way. It's not. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's like the whole world. People believe in different things. So, but uh, most women, the dark would, ages. Mm, women <laughs> would tend to, to support uh, uh, a candidates that support them. All right. So All right. that, that in that way, or women would probably tend to support uh, those who promote their issues. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like women's health and even uh, f uh, children's health, you know, mm -hmm. they might be tending to that. But to say that they really, you can predict, uh, maybe you can predict a bit, but not like, for instance, Iglesia Ni Cristo, uh, okay. five yeah. million, five million, ganyan, ganyan. Right. Hindi walang ganyan. Or maybe not yet. Sa not bahagi yet. ng LGBT naman, sa sabi nga natin, LGBT is a sexual minority in the society. So, hindi kami mayorya, hindi kami ganong kadami tulad ng babae. <laughs> so, ang, ang baha, sa bahagi namin ay, we should have to mobilize the LGBT community and to get the support of the straight allies. Kasi naniniwala kasi kami na, kalimbawa, sa amin sa pro-gay, na we are representing the underrepresented people, na yun din ang nare-represent ng ibang straight allies namin at nagmamatch naman yung aming ipinaglalaban so sa mga ganong paraan na isusulong unti-unti yung LGBT emancipation sa so espeto ng ekonomiya, politika at kultura. All right. Infidelity. It seems that the standards that women and men are held up against, they're not equal. Right. Um, but personally, I actually push for um, the non-criminalization of either uh, adultery or concubinage. concubinage. So I would say that, because in, in, in experience, I would see that it's actually the men and even those uh, bat battered, well, the, those who batter their wives are actually the ones who file for adultery cases. So these are me abusive men, abusive husbands who don't support their wives, who batter their wives. And they are the ones who file for, for adultery because they have the money, etc. Um, so in my case, I would say that um, there should be no criminalization of both. They can file for, for example, if, if one is abused, battered, for example, a woman can file for uh, RA 9262, yeah. that's the Anti-Violence -Violence Against Women and Their Children Act. Um, they can file for nullity of marriage, for example, for failure to provide support. The woman can file um, a criminal case for failure to provide support, for example. She can file for a protection order. Um, precisely to get percentage of the husband's salary. Um, so I would push for that. All right. We're going to have to leave it at that. Time really flies when the topic <laughs> is really compelling. Good to have you all this evening. Thanks to our guests, Attorney Claire Padilla, founder of Engender Rights, spokesperson for pro-gay or progressive organization of gays in the Philippines, Jomar Amores, and the founder of Can't Live in the Closet and the Women's Media Circle, Ana Lea Sarabia. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Tune in again next week as we make this vote count. I'm Nancy Irlanda, and this is Elections 2013.